So I'm guessing that turkey has a purpose today. That's a good weightlifting one. How Knock much is on that? It. Knock on it. Oh, yeah. How long does that take to go? Solid. I hope you don't crack well, today, the top. Today is uh, your last shot at it or your, your SOL. Wait, this is Thaw Turkey Day? Thaw Turkey Day. So, should've Monday today, we should have done yesterday. Welcome to the Todd and Aaron should've daily stream. Yesterday. Todd has been obsessed <sighs> with the Turkey Thaw Day. How many, how, okay, wait, wait. I do the cooking. All right, how many people have been stuck at the sink with a half frozen bird on Thanksgiving morning? Desperately rotating it, refilling the and water. And refilling the water, refilling the water. I think we've water. actually done that once or twice. I'm You've not always lie. been asleep. Really? You've always been sleeping. Is this true or not? Three, two, one, go. Yes. Yes. All right. So, um, I said the table. Thaw. Yes, you do. The forks go on the left next time. Uh, <laughs> I hate you. I'm left handed. I can never remember. I, I don't know why. I, I have to much, look it up. I got too much coffee going. I can kind of tell this. <laughs> yeah, you're like so super anyway, animated. So, anyway, the point is, is that um, if you have a 20 pound bird in the freezer, uh, it should have come out. Or if you haven't bought one, you might want to think, oh, maybe I'll get a fresh one instead. Just because. Just because. I'm cooking two this year. And don't remember, almost every one of the local grocery stores, the local chains, has a buy one, get one for the, the homeless shelter or Utah's Against Hunger or one of the food banks. They've got something going on. That are on. wonderful. And so yeah. always please, please, please check in because it's such check an easy way. And they really do work hard about trying to keep it low enough that you can get that one donated as well. See how nice that is. Cold weather is on its, uh, it's on no, our this doorstep. Is, no, seriously, this is like the last four or five days, 50 plus degrees with sunshine because right on Thanksgiving, things start <laughs> raining and it all goes down there. I got there. a call. Within 10 days, we're into like the teens, which I, is like, great, everything's frozen. I got over. a message from my friend, uh, Maine, and I uh, went to college with them and they are dragging their ice fishing sheds down through <gasps> the lake. And they leave, leave them there. They actually lock them to trees. Yeah, yeah explain that to me because these are not like the ice fishing. We've had an ice fishing tent before. These are no. like like little houses that you like yeah. slide out onto yeah. the ice. Yeah. So so um, grumpy old men, right? So you have one of those, and every year you add something to it or whatever. And you have a flatbed trailer from the farmer that you know, and they slide it off, and and you put it down by there. And then when it freezes, you. You chisel it out of the ice, and then you put it behind your truck, and you drive onto the lake, which is the craziest, funnest thing, driving your vehicle on a lake. Anyway, so uh, the point being is they have done this. They've had the big party where they added all the crap they were going to use this year um, and put in bunk beds, bunk that's, beds. That's pretty cool. Wood stoves, all this stuff. So, they're like, so they're like planning. This isn't like an hour and a half excursion. They're like there. This is the season. You take them out, and you leave them. You drive your trucks out to them, and you park around it as a party. This is where you hang out. I don't out. think our ice ever gets this that is, thick here, does it? I wouldn't drive my truck out on this ice. There's occasionally I four inches step you out can walk. It. Anyway, the really? the point is, oh. is that uh, when Erin and I first got together, I wooed her and charmed her uh, with uh, a variety of things. One Primarily of, ice fishing. One of them being ice fishing and taking her out. And uh, I will say, on the first day I took her, I planned it. It was a beautiful blue crystal sky. The ice had frozen clear, so you could see the flash of the fish as they went towards your hook. He had the ice was shrimp. clear. It was clear. It was this thick, and it was crystal clear. You could see down. And he had brought, like, chilled shrimp for me to nibble on, and I'm like, this is great. Uh -huh. Is it always like this? And he's like, yes. And so the next time he went, and I'm, like, waist deep in snow, I'm like, it's not as good, but okay, I love you. <laughs> 40 mile an hour winds, just 60 mile an hour winds, dead of night, just storm. Anyway, the you point You don't want being, to sell this to them like that because yeah. you've not been ice fishing before. It oh, really it's delightful. is fun. No, but it's really fun. It is fun. It is. And so uh, having done it for so so many years, and you and I have done it together for 20 something years, um, there's one easier way to do it. And I came up with an invention and it only cost me like $6 and I thought I would share. Evil genius. Here it is. Hey everybody, it's Todd here with some ice fishing tips. The worst part of ice fishing for me is getting your gear from the truck to the lake and the lake back to the truck. Now, I think I've answered this because I'm tired of carrying the white bucket with all the lines tangling and all that. So I went to the thrift store today and I got this idea. What I did is I got myself a golf bag. All right, stay with me on this one. First of all, 
is lightweight. Number two, it carries all your gear, your fishing rod. This is a very large chair I have in here. I usually use a smaller one. But this, I mean, it fits this. It will also fit a small shelter. That's a big chair, all right? Now, they have lots and lots of pockets. All right, so let's go through the pockets. First of all, it came with this. Wiping your hands off after you catch a fish. A fish. Also, plenty of places to put your other gear, and also your lures and jigs. And then for the hopeful people, a plastic bag to put your fish in to put back in the pocket. Also, extra pair of gloves, extra socks. Is Am I making a point here? There's a lot of room. Oh, really goofy hat, because that's what I fishing is all about. Also, on the other side, more pockets. All right, so over here, we have room for some of your bait. You have worms, you have mealworms. If you're using power bait, you have all of that. And it just keeps going. Also, if you want to have a first aid kit, you got a first aid kit for your friend who always falls down. And beer, you have beer, you have room for that. Now, that is about it. The pockets are huge. It's easy to carry. Oh, get this. Get this. It stands up. You could even put your fishing rod in here and watch it bob as it's in the water. Okay, so now the cool other thing about this is the fact that this one has two straps. So, you know, usually like golfing, you carry it like this and be pretty cool. Well, this one's got two straps, and that means you can put it over one shoulder and then put it over the other shoulder and carry it like a backpack so you can push your friends in the snow. So if you have any other questions, keep them to yourself. I uh, hope this explains some things. I'm really hoping this becomes a fashion statement around the United States of America. So very good. Watch the rest of my videos. I've got a bunch of cooking videos and things like that. And I have more stupid stuff on the way. My name is Todd and thanks for joining me. The Todd and Aaron Daily Stream is brought to you by PC Laptops with desktops and laptops starting as low as $7.99 with a lifetime parts and service warranty. They fix phones too. Go to PCLaptops.com. And by Brio Technologies. They rent, sell, and install audiovisual components including professional sound, lighting, video, and intercom systems, components, projectors, interactive whiteboards, and classroom audio systems. Just go to BrioAudioVisual.com. Welcome back to the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. Now, this is interesting. There's a great big billboard out by Peter right now here in Salt Lake City, and it says, Shop Vegan. I haven't seen it. And as a matter of fact, there was a lot of animal rights protesters that had a big demonstration over the weekend. Now, I'm going to preface everything that we say from now on with this. I was a card-carrying member of PETA, which is People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Mm -hmm. I marched with them. I demonstrated with them. I got mm -hmm. arrested with them for something that was totally reasonable because they were using domesticated animals for research purposes, which is wrong and evil, but that's another story. But this is so dumb. Now, now let me say this. I was, I was right there next to you without being involved like that. <laughs> um, not knowing you part, yeah. uh, and living in Maine and living on a, what I would like to call an ethical farm. And it and was, you were free. It was free range animals. That back, back Maine, they call it, uh, they call it a farm. Because they treat everything well, really nicely. Well, but that nicely. is the thing. That's one of the big things that PETA so, has accomplished is they brought to attention to the American public the horrors of factory farming, how they've mistreated animals. Pigs and Not stuff. Not all, but yeah. many animals okay, are... So, and also about the fur is no longer considered a luxury or fashionable item. These I are good things. I think that's great. I think that's yeah, great, these too. these are good things. And, and, and I, think, I think they had me, and I was right with them, right up to fishing. And then they had a picture of a dog with a hook and a thing like that. And I just went, you, you lost me. You lost, you've run out of things. There's whales. There's so many other things. And there's more animals being treated poorly. Now, to their credit, I think PETA apparently had put out a, a big... A big announcement about um, the Redland Pine and Livestock. Now, this is a sheep farm that's here along the Wasatch Front. It has uh, trade agreements with Patagonia, which is a very cool, very ethical site where mm -hmm. they, they, they make really good standards to make sure their wool comes from ethical farms. And there was mistreatment. So PETA had every reason to expose it, every reason to complain about it. One farm. But essentially what One they're farm. saying now is they said that, One farm. that shearing sheep and right. stealing their fur is cruel and inhumane. That's such... Now, you have sheared sheep. Is this an abusive practice? Okay. 
first of all, be 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 rational. I, I will. like this passionate. I will. Um, you are giving them a haircut. You're not killing them. It's um, subst a sustainable thing that they, they grow, produce. It continues to grow. Wool keeps and growing, you growing, cut growing. Cut it again, and you sell the wool, and the sheep lives. Um, if you've ever seen them on the farm I worked at, we only had like 40, 40, 50, I think, 50 sheep. And um, the, the, the shearer would show up with his daughter, and she was like, you know, 15 muscles. Because you basically take a sheep. It's a wrestling thing. And you throw it on its back, and you do it like this, and you get it in this position where it just kind of goes and hangs out. It's like when you pick a kitten up. By the scruff of the neck, and it just freeze. He goes goes into the fetal position, just like that, and then like this. And sometimes they do nick, as you would if you shaved. Sometimes there is a, a small cut or whatever, and then the sheep go out and roll around because now the warmer weather's here and they don't have oh, yeah, this it feels wonderful. blanket on them. So the answer is no. Well, one of the big things that Peter was bringing up, they said. Thousands of these animals are dying on these farms every day. And so... Not from shearing. Some of the representatives came out from the wool industry and they said, well, yes, a lot of sheep do die. Right. And they said, the reason why is it's, it's mainly predators. She said, you have to remember 80%... 80% of Utah land is grazing land. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, there's a lot of predators out there. She said, we had 15,000 documented cases of coyote, oh. uh, coyotes taking down sheep last year. She said, yeah, it does happen, but it's not because of abuse and neglect. Right. Except for this farm, which whose name I will repeat one. one more time, yeah. Red Pine Land and Livestock. Evidently have an issue. Mm -hmm. And they were also dumped from Patagonia's ethical list. Which oh, there I'm you glad. go. But it's like... It, we're going up to the stage now where I'm like, you got to scale back and go back to the the creatures where well, there's severe documented you, abuse. You there, was, there was one farm, and it sucks, but this is that, not... That farm right there. Every sheep right. in the globe. As a matter of fact, here, here's a challenge. When you're driving around Utah, even this time of year, they're starting to collect them and put them in wagons and bring them back uh, to, their, to their barns and their farm areas. Um, but when they're out there, if you ever see a really tall sheep... It's a llama. They actually use llama to protect sheep because they have, and Aaron's going to giggle, pointy hooves. And they hate coyotes. And so when the coyotes come in to grab the sheep. The pointy hooves. And they find the carcasses of these dogs. Of the coyotes. On the ground, having been taken care of by the by the irascible llama with the so maybe maybe the llamas we should have a talk to hmm <laughs> maybe the llamas are being cruel right no but anyway, anyway anyway we just thought it was interesting so if you've seen it you've seen some of the the protest issues with Peta I still so, I still conclusion. support I still support you guys and so and, do I, and but... us and and we are all on the same page on this but the fishing thing really. And they were going with cows and milk for a while. Yeah. I, anyway, just, okay. I don't know. Now, this was interesting. I didn't realize this, but you know they've already had a boatload of house, house fires in November, which yep. is a bummer. And you know what it is? It's the technology age that has done this. Because if you look at your computer right now, and you have two, two different plug stations. Two power strips, yeah. Two power strips. One, two, three, four. The printer, the... Da, 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 about and all that stuff. There, yeah. And you have one extra. And if you're sitting at your desk, and a lot of a lot of women I know from being told this for years, freeze at the office. Because men wear suits, and women don't wear necessarily suits, and it's cold. I think any office, though, has that satanic thing. We remember that where we, yeah. when we worked on radio, one, one station, one, uh, you know, studio would be freezing, then went all the way down the hall was the Sahara right. because nothing ever regulated. And so, I think that's this way. So, so the point being is if in your home, in your home, and you, and you have that plug, it's right there, and you plug your space heater into that, it draws so much power that the That this strips... happens. This was a warning oh, picture. Yeah. Yeah, this is a warning picture some, from the Morgan County Fire some Department. marshmallow. Saying, please don't do that, because here's the deal. The heating elements in a space heater get up to more than 500 to 600 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. And because of the immense draw of the power they take, mm -hmm. this is something that starts shorting out all of these, out of, you know, these power strips. Um, there was 56,000 fires um, that were just from space heaters in the U.S. last year. Well, I'd say again, how many? 56,000. Because of cold tootsies. 
And they said that nearly 75% of all home heating house fires happen in the next three months, in December, January, February. Right, 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 so the right. firefighters were really sweet. They're like, just because right. you give it its own individual plug. As of three years Please. ago, as of three years ago, maybe four years ago, we talked to the Salt Lake City and the, and the, the, the fire department along the Wasatch Frontier mm -hmm. in Utah, and he said there were no fatalities in any house that had functioning smoke detectors. We're jumping to smoke detectors now? Fires, smoke. Smoke detectors. Right. You want to be safe. All okay. right. Are you ready for Tell Me Something Good? Yes. But I'm concerned about my turkey right now. <sighs> then Would I'll you like go, to hold it up again? Then I'll go put it in the freezer. Okay. Now I'm ready. Okay. Tell, Tell me, me something, something good. good. This isn't... Okay. Does this start off horrible? Not horrible, horrible. But let's think about it. Any one of us who's traveled on a plane with a baby knows what this is like. And when Zachy and McClaney were twins, Todd would instantly buy drinks for everybody around us. Like, we're very sorry. We're here we're with so our sorry. offspring. We're, yeah. Until there was one day a man sent back drinks for us. And then we asked the flight attendant. She goes, he's got twins. I went, thank you. But here's the deal. So you, you, you pack everything you can possibly think of. Because, you know, you want to make sure that the baby, every possible need is met. It's a big mm -hmm. deal. Well, there was one poor woman. Uh, she was completely overwhelmed. She um, had a mom and the, she had the a baby. Mom? She had a mom on the flight okay. with a three-month-old baby. And apparently the baby had just gone through baby formula like there was no tomorrow. The mom right. was not nursing. Right. And so she started crying because the baby's just losing Freaking it. Freaking out. They yeah. can't give regular milk, not at three months old. Right. And so this baby is just inconsolable. And the mom's crying because now you, Get feel, out of you here. feel like a failure because you're like, Get out what of did here. I do wrong? And so on the Philippines airline flight, the flight attendant is Patricia Organo. Uh -huh. Well, she was, she came up and she said, would you like me to nurse the baby? And the mom's bawling, going, no, I can't. She, right. goes, she goes, I've got a nine month old. I'm still nursing. Right. I have milk. I would be happy to do it if you want me to. And the mom, there's no, wow. other, there's no other choice. And she goes, yes, that would be very nice. Thank you. Wow. So Patricia took the baby back to her jump seat. Mm -hmm. And, there you go. and nurse the baby. Now someone she's had, going to heaven. Someone snapped a picture of this, and they had posted it on Facebook, going, "I have never seen an airline employee go this far above and beyond before." That's like wow. Press is covering her, and she goes, "Well, look," she said, "In my early days of breastfeeding, I wanted to give up, and it was without my husband's emotion, you know, support. I don't think I could have, I could have done it." She said, "And once I knew how, and I recognized how powerful it is." Right. She said. It, it's that instinct. If you can, yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah, there's that instinct, she says, though, that you yeah. want to make sure that every baby is like your baby. You want to make sure they're taken care of. And she said, when I heard the baby crying, my milk started letting go. Oh, anyway. oh, I've seen this, yeah. And she's like, I will, she said, I ha of course I could. And she said, it, my, as a flight attendant, my job is to attend to my passengers' needs. She said, it just wow. so happened that this one was three months old, and it was a pleasure. Wow. But talk about going above and beyond. It's like that amazing police officer that we told you about in Brazil where they had brought in these just dreadfully, terribly abused and neglected children. Right. And there was this, remember, this little stinky, awful baby that right, was right, just right, right. in such misery. And she nursed the baby while because they were trying to was, figure out what to do. She was nursing her own baby. Yeah. I mean, I, to me, that I can't even imagine a gift more powerful than that. Uh, it's, it's so personal. I mean, I think a lot of the men are just going, wow. Because, I mean, that is... She goes, I can still remember the look of relief in the mother's eyes as the baby was finally able to eat. There you go. So I love you. Patricia, you're an amazing right. woman. That is Tell Me Something Good. You guys have a great day. Preparing for a short week, aren't we? Yeah, but don't forget Christopher's Prime Steakhouse. We will have another dinner for four that we're giving away on Friday. So maybe you were tired of cooking after Thanksgiving. You want <laughs> or maybe someone else to do you'll it? eat in a month and a half or so. Their certificate's good for them. Yeah, so. but then we'll make sure that you are covered. Just like and share the show today. Drop a comment, whichever one of those three you like, and you're on your way. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.